everyone. Welcome to Studio Sunday with Robin and Terry. We hope everyone had a happy Thanksgiving or at least endured it. <laughs> We're happy to be home and um, moving forward with what's going on. We've got a lot of big things going on right now. Five years number six will be in the stores on December 11th, so be sure to pick it up from your local comic shop or from our website. And if your comic shop doesn't carry it, they can certainly order it for you, so you might encourage them to do that. Also, dun da 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 SIP Omnibus ships this week. We are so happy. We expect the books in the warehouse tomorrow, and we are ready and waiting. So yep. it'll be all hands on deck to get them out as soon as possible. Um, we expect to have all the orders filled by the end of the week. And you will be receiving either a USPS tracking number or a FedEx tracking number to the email you um, gave us on your order. All uh, US orders will require a signature for delivery, so keep that in mind. We're so happy to have this one almost done. Thank you guys so much for ordering and for supporting us through this uh, long process. Yeah. So uh, that's all the news I have this week. We've been uh, out in the country eating pumpkin pies, so it's been kind of a quiet work week for us, which is nice. So let's get on with our questions. Are you ready, Mr. Moore? I'm ready. Okay. So Brett Bottomley asks, what are Terry's top five Desert Island albums? Music. <sighs> I would have to say... James King Rides Again, um, the first ZZ Top album, Pick Us TV Ray Vaughan album, Wes Montgomery, and I need one more. I better pick a Beatle album, Sgt. Peppers. So How's all that? old stuff. Yeah, it's all old stuff. Okay. <laughs> it's all old gold guitar stuff. When it comes to everybody now, uh, I like one song, but not the album. So, not a lot of desert albums uh, in the last five years. Okay, so um, your next question is from Kevin Kroll, who says, Love your work and your videos. I reference your How to Draw book constantly. Any chance of another volume? Yes. Um, I think I've come up with a, a few more categories that I could write about. Um, particularly in the last few years, is uh, I've had to learn how to draw new types of things as opposed to just all these people. When you're storytelling, you know, you have to draw strange things like Moscow and uh, bridges in the snow and, you know, people parachuting, fun things, uh, plus big machinery and things like that. Um, one thing I probably won't do a lesson on is perspective. Perspective is hard for me. Um, I'm not very good at the engineering of it all, so I may skip over that part. But um, yeah, I love the cartooning part, how to draw something, uh, all the people and the characters, plus other things besides. So yeah, I think I could come up with a few more lessons. Okay, he has a second part to his question. Also, what other books or instructors do you recommend for cartooning expressions? Thanks so much. Keep living the dream, he says. <laughs> I love That's that. great. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, the best way to learn about the expressions is to uh, just look into the work of the people that, whose work you enjoy. For instance, Jeff Smith and Bone. My gosh, the expressions on just those simple, iconic Bone figures. Uh, he has every expression in the world in his story. Uh, another guy who's fantastic at it is Eric Powell with Goon. And he does more rendering on the faces, obviously, but it's still cartoony. Um, and you can learn an awful lot, especially because both of those books have a lot of humor in them. And humor is often delivered with these subtle expressions. You know, maybe somebody's being sarcastic or wry or... Uh, they're doing a little aside. Those kind of things are really fun to draw. And also, um, part of the great thing about expressions is um, when they're 
put together with action. Um, it's one thing to stand there and deliver a line. It's another thing to do it while you're falling off of a ship or uh, hopping over a, a flying barrel, those kind of things. There's a lot of body language to it. And that's one thing that we might forget about expressions is body language. Um, where, where your shoulders are and how your head is cocked has everything to do with how that, you know, finishing the expression. So Eric Powell, Jeff Smith are great at it. Will Eisner, anything he did, of course, is kind of, uh, is really worth studying. Um, most notably, the people who have um, reputations for great cartooning are, are going to be very good at expressions. Charles Schultz, you have to mention the master. I mean, he had the simplest little drawings. They were basically smiley face people. And, uh, but every expression in the world was there from Linus to Lucy to Charlie Brown to, to Snoopy. Um, so, yeah, there's, I think it's easy to find great lessons and, and books on and where to learn how to do that. Um, another, I'll give you one last tip. Another last tip is to pick somebody who's a terrific actor and uh, just frame by frame through one of their monologues. Uh, say they're on camera for a minute and talking, uh, especially if they're excited, panicked, uh, upset, happy. Click through it frame by frame and you'll see their face just go all over the place. It's not a, a deadpan. As a matter of fact, when people tend to deliver deadpan, we tend to think they're not very good actors. Uh, and even the guys who look like they're doing very little still have a lot of subtle stuff going on with their eyes and how big the eyes are and things. So watching great actors is frame by frame is a great way to, to pick up on the subtlety of delivering your lines. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do a little, we're gonna have a pop quiz. Okay. Uh, we're gonna put this on hold because we're a one camera operation. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and you're gonna get some paper and we're gonna let you show him exactly how to draw an expression. So, okay. get ready. Okay, so we're back. Uh, why don't you give him an example of how to draw Kachu with those kind of crying eyes. Um, okay. You know, how do you get there? Okay. Um, when I'm thinking about Kachu, you start with, I start with the basic just to know where everything is. Um, the key, of course, is the eyes. So I always start with the eyes and then I rough it in just so I know where things are. I have no expression at this point. I'm just trying to get the face there. And if you'll notice, there's actually no expression right now. If I can just get Kachu on the paper, then, then I will dial in what's going on with their face. So here we are. There's my basic. There she is. And if I, you know, get rid of these outside lines, you'll stop seeing them. Okay, so we have a basically a kachu, and she's lined up. It's really... Terry does a lot of erasing. I do a lot of erasing. One thing I've noticed is it's really important to get the eyes level, um, otherwise the drawing will never look right. Okay, so here we are. Kachu's listening. Uh, but you're saying something that is not good for her to hear. So... There's an upward slant to her eye as it comes over the fullness of the eyeball. The eyeball is in there. There's an eye socket in there. You have to think about what's behind what you see. So this is at the, the eyebrow is at the top of the eyeball socket. And when somebody is struggling with some emotion, the eyebrows are very expressive and it can be a mild thing to just a mild um, pulling together of the uh, eyebrows and then to finish it you finish up the top line here and it pulls
pulls this together. What would normally be just, you know, moon eyes, that, that little uh, bit above the eye, it pulls with the, this eyebrow points. So these are like pulling on a sheet. And when you pull this line together, you're starting to recognize that look, aren't you? You know, you, if you saw that look in on the face of somebody you were talking to, you would realize you're not making them happy. And then the rest of it is supporting this. Now, she can either be talking or she can be listening. Uh, if it's just going to be listening, then I would finish this out like this. Boy, that's one sad kachu. And there's something about letting this, this lip rest. It just falls at rest and it's no longer um, full of joy and uh, turned up at the corners. The corners are down. There's a little bit of a, a line here on the bottom lip. That is not a happy camper. And I did it with the ends of the eyebrows pulling in, pulling this eye up. Um, the, the mouth goes into uh, total relaxation and actually uh, starts to droop. And then if you feel like you're fighting back tears, you come in here with the reflection of water on the eyeball. And that's what the little highlights are. Oops. That's what the little highlights are at the bottom of the... That means the eyes are filling up with water. So, that's just one expression. And I could very easily do that on a smiley face, which is basically... There's basically what I did. Does it make sense? The rest of it is just putting your character on it. Okay, good. I hope everybody enjoyed that and got something out of it. So maybe we'll do that next week as well and we can do a friend scene with another expression. Let's get, let's do a happy face to let's, make up for this. Let's do. <laughs> Heart-wrenching drawing. <laughs> okay. Okay, everyone have a good week and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.